Hey YouTubers, some of you may have seen a video that I put up a little while ago about making a reef anchor. Well that didn't go as well as I'd hoped because the reef anchor was way too heavy. I should have done my arithmetic before I built the anchor instead of just eyeballing it. The one I built was too heavy for the float. It actually pulled the float under and kept it under, considerably under. So I'm redoing the anchor, making it much lighter, and this time I've done my sums, I've worked out how heavy the anchor should be in order to keep the plate on top of the water. And since I expect this one to work, I'll put some plans up for it in case anyone else is interested in building one. So I've uh, cleaned up any of my jobs that have been saying for months that I'm going to get some finished, but I keep getting new ones, and the old ones keep getting put aside, but I am going to make a concerted effort to get rid of some of these jobs. Anyway, this is the main shaft for the reef anchor. It's the, uh, on the plans, I think it's 1780 long. I'll just check that, what is it? So yeah, 1780 long on the plans. I made it 1800 before I bent it. I've marked the center of it here. I've got a piece of pipe, which is probably a bit on the big side, but it'll do. So you put it in the center as I wrap it around to make sure I get a big enough eye left to put the de-shackle through. See if I can just brace things enough to get this bent happening. This is of course a lot easier to do if you heat the metal. I don't have any oxy and I don't feel like firing the forge up to do it because that takes a fair while. So I'm just going to do it the hard way. Hopefully with some clamps and a bit of persuasion, I can make that work. I've got to get these things parallel. So there's my loop. It's going to be big enough for the uh, de-shackle to go through. What's happening here is that's the centre column of it. That's going to weld all the other pieces around. I've ground the chisel edge on the end of it there so it fits up in there nicely. And I can get a good weld on that. Then, once I've welded that end in, I'm going to pull these two sides in so that they're up against the central piece and weld them in place. And this is why I left it a bit long, because you never get it quite right when you're bending, trying to bend the centre, so I can cut that off and it'll still be the right length. I think I might take the camera over and give you a close look at it. That's where the de-shackle goes through. That's the piece I tacked. I've pulled that in as tight as I can against the central rod. There's maybe a millimetre of gap up this end and no gap down this end. I've got it in tight, so that'll work okay for what I want. I'm going to put a couple of tacks along this now to hold that in place. I put a little bit of plastic ruler under here just to hold these ends up so that it stays central on the slightly larger rod. So central up and down on the rod. I've got the other side pieces positioned there, ready to weld on. And I was wondering how I was going to hold them there. And then, I'll just zoom in so you can see it. I decided that if you can't do it with duct tape, it just can't be done. So I held them in position, got my wife to run the tape around it. That's going to keep them more or less in position. I get a glove on and just hold them exactly on the end here while I tack the ends. And then I should be right to take the duct tape off and just go ahead and weld them. That's the theory anyway. Going anywhere. Take this off now. Run a weld down each one of these outside pieces. Not so much because it needs it all the way down, but more because I want to. I still might let that cool down completely before I weld the rest because get too much heat, it's going to pull all different directions. 
at the moment, they're all reasonably straight. No sense rushing the job and spoiling it, just let it cool, go and do something else. I'm just trying to put the pipe around this now. So that's ready. It's the same length as the central core. Since there's no real weight on this pipe, no drag on the pipe, I don't think it'll ever come off, but I'm going to put a bit of weld on it anyway. That's filled about as much as I can fill now. When I bend the prongs out, if there's any gaps in the centre, I'll fill them with elastic or something just to seal them, so that I can get the pal gal down the centre. So it's time to bend the spokes on this. I'm going to try and do it here in the blacksmith's vice, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to get a good enough grip on it to be able to do that. So if it doesn't work, I'll just have to take it over to the other vice. Blacksmith's vice is not the best jaws in the world. It's over 100 years old. Good for some jobs. A bit long in the teeth for others. Got a big piece of SHS here. Any bit of pipe will do. Anything that's hollow. Give yourself some leverage so you don't have to work too hard to do this job. And just keep moving it back till you get a nice uh, radius on that bend. And do remember to rotate so that you're always bending the one straight up. It's going to be a lot easier. Or always out to the side. Just do it, rotate it around and do whichever one works best. You can just eyeball the angle here, around about 45 degrees is all you need. And just make sure she's straight with the shaft. Well this is the almost finished anchor. It's completely fabricated but it's still waiting another coat of paint just to finish it off. Very happy with the way it turned out, exactly as I planned it. The weight came out perfectly. It's all good and looking forward to using it for the first time. And that's weighing in at 12 and a half pounds, six and a bit kilos, which is pretty much right for the size of my boat. This is the rest of the gear to go with the anchor. I've got the 250 metres of silver rope. Spliced an eye into the end of that. Galvanised shackles onto 3 metres of short length 10 mil chain. Shackle on the other end to take the anchor. Now that'll let me anchor just about anywhere I can practically want to anchor. I'm not going to want to anchor it any more than about 3 400 feet of water anyway, so that should be plenty. And I've got this plate to pull the anchor up with because there's no way I'm going to pull that up by hand. And I got this one because the ring comes off. I don't have to put it on before I drop the anchor. I can undo this clip here, put the ring on and then clip back around the ring and that will then pull up the anchor. It's a bit hard to explain how it all works in words, but once I get it all out there and I'm anchored up one day, I'll take a video and just show you how it works. Get the anchor up with practically no effort at all. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I know the reef anchors themselves aren't real dear, but if you've got the spare scrap iron sitting around doing nothing and the ability to make it, you may as well save yourself a few dollars. You can buy some extra bait with it. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell notification button beside it. Until next time.